and welcome to the Philia Joy Show, here for your enjoyment. I am so honored to be doing my first documentary on my beloved country, Liberia. As you all may know, July 26th marks the Independence Day of the Republic of Liberia. Liberia owes its establishment to the American colonization in 1816, where free slaves from America came to Liberia. So for this documentary, you have to stay tuned because you're going to be hearing some personal stories about the Civil War, views on Liberia, and of course, the history of our country. So stay tuned and enjoy this documentary. Once again, happy July 26th. interview is with the president of the Liberian Association here in Sacramento. She's going to talk about her childhood once more. She's also going to talk about the reason she protested. This will be definitely interesting. Our next guest is Miss Hazel. Miss Hazel is the Liberian president here in Sacramento. She's also a discharge planner for the mental health Center. This woman is so involved. She, I guess you said that you're also like a board member, a board member of many organizations. Ms. Hazel, thank you so much for having this interview with me. I really appreciate it and I can't wait to hear your story. So, we're gonna start with your childhood in Liberia. Tell me about it. My childhood in Liberia was very beautiful. I must admit, I was mm -hmm. privileged mm -hmm. to grow up in San Nicole, Nima County. I was there with the first superintendent of Nima County, Gabriel Fangalo, the wow. late Gabriel Fangalo. And I'm proud to say that I was on the first float as a flower girl uh, in Nima County. I went to Simiri High, I mean Simiri Elementary School, mm -hmm. and migrated to Morovia and went to Ritz Institute and graduated from sixth grade and then went to Bidara Harris Episcopal High, which I graduated from and went to the University of Liberia. University and of Liberia, nice. It seemed like everybody went to that school. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was the local university mm, affordable mm. in Morovia at the time with very high prestige and standard mm -hmm. of universities in West Africa. Uh, and during my year at the university, we were the ones that were uh, very unfortunate mm -hmm. to have the coup. During the transition mm -hmm. of the history of Liberia gotcha. that was moving mm -hmm. okay. from the Congo to the indigenous people mm -hmm. where we had the war, okay. the university was affected greatly. Mm -hmm. Where we had, I mean, at one time during the we were rallying mm -hmm. on the price of rice going up. Mm. And then the government came where Sergeant Samuel Kanyando took over. Mm -hmm. And at that time, the university students were angry. And we were there mm -hmm. going, you know, striking and carrying on. And Wow, such a political leader already yeah, at a young age. <laughs> and at that time, it was scary because mm -hmm. I work at Copa Clinic mm -hmm. and my aunt used to work at the library mm -hmm. and she went to the library and they have warned that no, the students shouldn't go on campus mm -hmm. because the next day the government was going to send our, our soldiers on campus. Wow. So when I woke up she said to me, do not go on campus mm -hmm. and I said, oh no, I'm going to work. So I shower, mm -hmm. took the cab, went on campus with her knowing, and we were there striking, you know. Rebellious, there, that's mean, the name of the yelling, game. <laughs> turning cars over, uh -oh. chanting, we didn't want the government. But by two o'clock around 132, I should have come back to work, so I left. Mm -hmm. And it was so heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. When I got to the office, Copa Clinic on 12th Street, mm -hmm. I heard the first gunshot, and I'm telling you, at that time, all of the nurses, doctors, mm -hmm. ran out of Copa Clinic. So I ran in because I was the administrative assistant personnel at the time. So I ran into the clinic, and while I was there, the first taxi came with part of victims hmm. from the university. Women with their clothes torn off, beating women that have been raped oh, goodness. and I mean uh, at that time I didn't realize how stressful 
hours mm -hmm. because I had to take the place of the nurses mm -hmm. and assist the doctors in treating most of the patients. Mm -hmm. So my mother at that time too worked at Copa Clinic as the nurse mm -hmm. and she was there and my uncle, all the doctors were there as we went on helping, taking care of people that were wounded and all of that. So we were there, nobody called my aunt, who mm -hmm. I live with on the old road. So by 12 o'clock that night, my mother realized and said to her cousin, do you know we have mommy here? And she is from LU, so she knows all these people. Mm -hmm. So what can we do? And he said, mm -hmm. she's doing fine. Don't do anything to her. Let's wait that in the morning and we will take her home. Mm -hmm. So the next morning they took me home and my aunt at that time was almost dead. She was so angry. You won't tell me you've been at Copa Clinic all this time and nobody mm -hmm. told me. And I said, well, we were there helping and mm -hmm. I forgot because there were too many people coming in at that time that we couldn't leave. So right there and then, that's when I think they decided that I had to leave the country mm -hmm. and travel to the USA because mm -hmm. I have seen too much and they became right. frightening for me. I see. Great story. So let's reverse and go back mm. a little bit. So you said that you guys went on a rally. You're mm. chanting that mm. like you don't like the government. Mm. You said because of the that was, rice going up? Is that yeah, what, that the was price of rice was going up. Wow, well, so rice was that important? <laughs> rice was that <laughs> <The important. laughs> Wow, okay. Rice was that important and then also the government mm -hmm. with the uh, sergeant coming over, mm -hmm. taking over from the political uh, country that have never faced mm -hmm. a war before. So doing all of the rioting and the excitement of the soldier coming over and taking over the Liberian government, mm -hmm. we had people in the streets yelling uh, illiterate women, people that were not educated, that have seen their child now into mm -hmm. power, mm -hmm. was running the streets and yelling, country woman born soldier and making woman born rock. So, so we, explain to, for some of those who might be watching, what does that mean? It meant that to the illiterate women mm -hmm. or the uneducated women that have now seen their sons coming up into power where they have never been. Um. They are now saying they they born soldiers, which means soldiers got power, mm -hmm. and the country they making women or they conquer women mm -hmm. that have had all these uh, educated uh, leaders like Tutman, Tabo, oh, you know, okay, they I'm, were saying okay. uh, making women born rogues. So oh, name, I see. It's uh, like the role switch. Yes, I the see. Switch. Like you born like a illiter like a little woman born like a child, but the child becomes you know, so, so powerful yeah, and smart. Nah, yeah. And then the nah, nah. smart person born a smart child, but then the child yeah, actually the a, a rock. makes so, it. So that's what they were chanting in the street. So, Auntie Hazel, Mrs. Hazel, did you actually experience the war? Oh yes. So I, tell me about your experience doing the war. Like, where were you? How did you react to the the gunshots? I the, mean. There were a lot of, I mean, I have been so outspoken for mm -hmm. a long time because there were times I was at the LU campus and leaving to go to work mm -hmm. and there would be maybe uh, uh, one of the upcoming leaders would mm -hmm. come on campus in a big old tinted car and we drive in front of the girls or the ladies and someone would jump out and say, mm -hmm. hey you over there. My boss wants to talk to you, mm -hmm. and you turn around. I used to turn around and say, "Winnie, the way is your boss?" <laughs> and they're like, "Oh, you see, you conga girl. You got so much big mob. You don't know my boss." And I say, "I don't know your boss. If your boss wants to talk to me, let your boss get out of the car." Hello. And then <laughs> right morning. away, I would just taxi, jump in the taxi, and leave. Uh, and I mean, during the war, uh, we live on the old road in front of ACS. Mm -hmm. And my cousin one day was coming when they, when they had us from dust to dawn curfew. Mm -hmm. She went out and she's coming strutting down old road. And one of the soldiers saw her and started shooting in the air. Wow. And I came running on the patio and I, why in the hell are you shooting in the air for? And you Bravery. Said, he wow. said, you a conga girl, I want that one over there. And my aunt running outside. Luckily for us, my uncle, who, who, who is the late Joseph Fangalo, was the colonel, one of the colonels in the army. He drove right in front of the house that time. Mm -hmm. And he saw the soldier in front of the house shooting. And he said to him, what are you doing here? 
And he said, oh, boss man, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't know. Mm -hmm. So he said, okay, from now on, you got this house. And if anything happened to them in this house, mm -hmm. I'll be back for you. So at least we had a soldier that was, you know, guarding the house right. up to that time. But I was not there for the meeting because this was like 19, I came 86. Mm -hmm. So this was just the beginning of the, the seriousness. But I mean, people could project that things mm -hmm. were going to get worse. Mm -hmm. So my family decided at that time that I needed to come to the U.S. So I migrated to the U.S. in 1986. Wow, beautiful story. Such bravery. I mean, a soldier is in front of your house shooting. You went out there and said, hey, why are you shooting? I would be so scared. I would have I mean, went back in my house and hide under the bed. Yeah, my cousin was out there and uh -huh. we were so close. So mm. it's like... If you go in to shoot her, you will have to shoot, shoot all of us. You guys hear that? Yeah. This is what you call a true friendship mm -hmm. right there. It's not you want me to take a bullet for your own parents. <laughs> <laughs> and and say, hey, so Mrs. Ace was willing to take a bullet for yeah. her cousin. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. So let's talk about um, Ebola. I know you were president during the Ebola crisis, right? No, I you came were not. Right, yeah. You came right after. Mm -hmm. So what was your help during the Ebola crisis? Well, I didn't do much during the Ebola besides financially giving them support. Okay. So, yeah, but I mean, my mm. heart was broken. Mm -hmm. It was tension. I mean, anything that happened within the community and with, uh, within our country mm -hmm. affects every one of us. Oh, absolutely. I don't, I don't care if it's not in your immediate family. Mm -hmm. You get to know families mm -hmm. that have suffer, uh, suffered from it. Right. So really, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it broke my heart. And it still is because we still don't have ample medications, doctors, and mm -hmm. what have you in Liberia. You're so right. Did you know anyone in like in Liberia during the Bola crisis? Were families back home? I got all my family back home. I mean, my siblings. What did they tell you about doing, like, doing the crisis? Like, what were they saying? What were well, they saying? During they can't... the crisis, uh, it was so funny because I told them uh, I sent money for Clorox. Uh, hydrogen peroxide, any of the first aid that I knew mm -hmm. could do things, but I didn't realize that they were washing their hands with plain Clorox. Until she called me, when my sister called me and said, oh, my hand's peeling. And I said, what are you doing? Right. And she said, I washed my hand with the Clorox. I said, no, I didn't tell you that. I told you put a little cup of Clorox <laughs> in, a fair, in a bucket of water. water. Yes. And keep it so when people come in, they wash their hands. And when people go in out, you, you know. Mm -hmm. I said, but please don't do that. Don't tell anybody I told you to do that. <laughs> Wow, okay, so where do you see Liberia? Do you think we're progressing? We do we have a promising future? We do have a promising future. And this is where each and every Liberian needs to join forces. Mm -hmm. uh, because it's serious. We have to begin to trust, respect one another. Our country was built on faith. We put God first in everything that we end up doing mm -hmm. and for this to happen to us is and was a rule awakening for Liberians and it really up till now talking about Liberia and what happened in Liberia as much as I was there I say this is where my passion really takes over because now Liberians mm -hmm. have traveled all over the world uh, I don't care if I haven't been to Europe or Liberia is now in Europe uh, or Liberia is now in Alaska or Liberia is now I don't know where. I saw when you can put all of the knowledge and experience that Liberians have gathered all over the world and take the best back to our country, I can see there is hope for Liberians to become better and the country to grow. The only thing we have to do is, as, as I say, is respect one another, trust one another, and mentor our youth. I mean, all of us cannot be doctors, all of us cannot be presidents, all of us cannot be lawyers. So we will have some street cleaners, we will have some construction workers. We need people to build back Liberia. Mm -hmm. We need us to go back to Liberia and do a lot of things. So I'm hopeful. I'm very, very hopeful that the educations that gather from all over the world 
going back to that small minute country oh yes we can take over the world mm -hmm. well said i could not have said that any better Inti Hazel, thank you so much for taking time and telling us your story about the war, your thoughts on Liberia. It was very inspiring. Thank you so Not much. Not only that I had the privilege of interviewing my guests, but I also got to hear their point of view. And this is what they had to say. Yuren, I'm proud to say that I truly is a Liberian in America, Sacramento, California, and also the president of the Association of Citizens and Friends of Liberia. My memory back home and what I cherish more of our culture and family values back home is I grew up as a child, never at home by myself. We always had either a grandmother, a sister, a cousin, a brother, or somebody home. We ate together, we prayed together, we played to get, uh, together. Uh, I could leave my house and walk two blocks to another house just to see a friend and I could eat a meal at that house like I'm home without anybody even offering me the food. I just get there and I'm hungry, there's food. That's the part of Liberia that I always will remember. The sad part is the greed in our country and among us the envy we have of one another, the bitterness we have among ourselves is what I really, really hit and prayed about every day that we can do away with. I mean, if your brother becomes a lawyer, dance, cherish your brother, pray for your brother, lift your brother up, but do not bring your brother down because your brother has succeeded in something that the law has prepared for us. Because remember, we have five fingers. If the Lord wanted us to all be the same, all fingers will be even. So we have to respect that of one another. That's the part I really, truly do not like about Liberians. Another thing I do not like about us as that in that country is when a leader takes over, the whole family becomes part of that leadership. And that leadership, if that leadership goes down, the whole family goes down. Remember all of those 30 men that were shot at the barracks for serving the country. That's another thing no child or nobody can never ever forget. I mean, I take my heart, my heart bleeds each day when I think about it. Because those were people that I grew up with. Those were family that I know. So with me saying that, I know there is hope. I see the future bright for Liberians because we can do it. We have served the Almighty God. We have traveled long, far away. We have always managed to come back together. So as the president of the Association of Citizens and Friends of Liberia, right here in our community, there's a saying, you fall down, you get up. So we fall, we fight, but when there's uh, work to be done, we come together and we work. So I believe Liberia will become Liberia and will be a great country in Africa when things all get together, when all the puzzles are placed together. So God bless Liberia and happy Independence Day. And that's it. I hope you had a wonderful time watching the July 26th documentary. Once again, happy Independence Day to all my fellow Liberians and friends of Liberia all around the globe. As we gather to celebrate the 169 years anniversary of our homeland, let us not forget who we are and where we come from. Let us remind ourselves that though we may be from many tribes, we're still one nation. Our Liberian people are proud, resourceful, patriotic, despite all the hardship and horror of the Civil War. We continue to rise and put our nation first. The future holds nothing but possibilities if we just work together for the common good of Liberia. Long live!
the Republic of Liberia, and long live the Liberian people. Happy July 26th. My 26th on you all.